Welcome to the Michigan eLibrary Supporting Elementary Instruction. My name is Ann Kaskinen. I am the K-12 Engagement Specialist for the Michigan eLibrary, which means basically that I either go out and provide in-person training to anyone pretty much in the K-12 community. Uh, my newest audience would be K-12 counselors. We're doing a lot of work with military um, exploration and preparation resources that we have in Mel, and I'll be teaching a class through REMSI this winter um, for those K-12 counselors on military. So I am employed by the Midwest Collaborative for Library Services, and we are a nonprofit that serve all libraries in Michigan and Indiana, and seven of us at MCLS are contracted by the Li Library of Michigan, and that includes me. Um, after today, if you are interested in having me come into your building or work just directly with your staff, I'm happy to work at staff meetings, after school professional development, scheduled professional de development, and I can pretty much work, like I said, with anyone in K-12. I even do a K-3 emphasizing the literacy essentials, so a wide range of uh, possibilities there. After today, if you have any questions at all about the e-resources, tech questions, how do they work, why can't I connect, anything like that at all, contact us at melerhelp at mcls.org and we will answer, answer those for you very quickly. Um, but you have to let us know if you're having troubles. We don't want anyone to have any connectivity issues. So that's a really big deal. And we know that authentication with these purchase databases can sometimes be challenging. So we want to head it off before it becomes a problem and make sure that you and your students are getting into it um, very easily to these resources. The last item on this page is the e-resource announcement um, listserv. So anything related to the e-resources in the Michigan e-library, go to this listserv and anyone in the state is welcome to follow that listserv. So why would we want to access the resources in MEL? First and foremost, we have something in there for every curriculum K-12. There's at least some content that really can support everyone. And um, when we think about information literacy specifically, the expectation now at the end of second grade is that students will know the difference between a primary and secondary source. So information literacy, I don't want to just think about it as um, our secondary students and us, we as adults and what that means, but our littles also have to think about where information is coming from to the point where they're being asked to understand that, that difference by the end of second grade. So our resources in MEL offer simple citation up to nine different formats for citation, MLA, APA, Chicago, and Harvard um, included. Also, we have content that supports the essential instructional practices and literacy. These typically align with essentials two, three, five, and eight from the K3 and the four, five documents. And then when we move up to the 612 document, the expectation is that at sixth grade, a student will be able to navigate a database. So really important that we're making our students aware of what these databases are and the content that is held within them. The Michigan Integrated Technology Competencies for Students is another place where we can be very supportive, especially in that knowledge constructor vein. As I mentioned, we have quite a lot of content for career college and military preparation. And then finally, built-in accessibility tools. Many of the resources in MEL offer some visual navigation, images, video, and they also offer text-to-speech, um, translation, and in those text-to-speech tools, there are things like page masking, um, changing the color of text, highlighting text with different colors, things that can help our visually impaired, those that struggle with dyslexia. So a lot of different built-in accessibility tools that we'll take a look at along the way today. And so what is in MEL and the e-resources? And think about MEL as two parts. There's the e-resources and then there's MELCAT. Our focus is going to be on the e-resources and I'm going to talk a little bit about MELCAT in a minute, but right now think e-resources. And typically we would ca call these databases. So kind of a synonym. The difference is that we've put them behind a link called e-resources because some of these are actually tools. They're not databases on their own. They're tools that search databases. 
So that's why we have that term e-resources. So it can be a little bit more collective and inclusive of other things. But in there, we have three encyclopedias. We have two designated just for kindergarten through fifth grade. That's the World Book Kids Encyclopedia and then World Book Kids in Spanish. And then we have the K-12 Encyclopedia Britannica. And I love them both, but Britannica stands out a little bit more because they are constantly updating. I think of Britannica as the Wikipedia of academia, because every day we see 12 or 15 new articles added and about the same amount of articles that have been edited and updated. So really love the encyclopedia resources we have in, in Mel. Job and career resources. 70 plus databases with subscriptions to articles. And what I mean by that, for example, our elementary database, Primary Search, has a number of current subscriptions and archive subscriptions um, that are available. So if you look through this list, you see all of these different publications that are free to everyone in the state of Michigan. And really for our elementary staff, I think about the scholastic publications. I think those are probably a favorite and zoo books over here also a favorite for many of our elementary staff and students. So we're going to learn how to go into that and access and share those um, resources today. Another database that when we think of a true database and what's in it, Education Source is also a database. All of the publications you see on this page are free, again, to anyone in the state of Michigan. And we have all of those scholastic publications in Primary Search database. And now in the Education Source database, we have all the corresponding teachers edition of those different um, or the teacher's guides of those different scholastic publications. So not only do we have the content that we can share with students, but now we have the behind the scenes to help us coordinate how and why we would share that with students. So a lot there. Another, and I always call this the hidden database because no one at an academia ever thinks to go into the hobbies and crafts reference center, but this is a great location to find makerspace ideas. And I know that's a really hot thing to do in our elementary media centers. So I just wanted to point out some, of, some again, some of the sub subscriptions that we have available to us for free through the Hobbies and Crafts Reference Center. And of course we can search these, re these um, resources traditionally with our keyword searches and our advanced search tools and all of that, but we can also go directly to the publication that we want. So we have a lot of flexibility with that. And then just because we're all adults here, Master File Complete is probably um, the most robust of all the resources in that it hits a little on academia, it hits on popular things that are available to all of us, like Sports Illustrated, People, People in Spanish, Motor Trend. Um, these that I have highlighted those are actually linked directly to that publication so i use this um, slide actually to help me keep track of articles that i've shared out on social media so whenever i share one i link it so i know it's something that i've already addressed so that's what i mean when i'm talking about these 70 plus databases with subscriptions to articles and we're going to look at a few of those today Ebooks, we have five different ebook collections, including a K-8 collection and a high school collection. And so we're going to be diving into the K-8 collection today to look at different ebooks that we might want to share with our students. And when I think of those elementary essentials, two, three, five, and eight, having um, access to books 24 seven, that's in there. And this definitely gives all of our students in the state who have an internet feed access um, access to these books. Readers Advisory, we have two databases in MEL that are just for Readers Advisory. They are Novelist Plus and Novelist K8 Plus. Um, both of these tools are incredible. I can type any book in, for example, um, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I can type that into the search and the things that I get are um, reviews of the book. I get a Lexile level of the book. I get how many accelerated reader points this book has. I can also get um, appeal terms, what the plot is like. And then because it has so much information about that book, it also lists 
10 read alikes and it gives me a recommendation on what to read next if I just finished that book. So it's a really incredible tool for readers advisory, can answer any of your question about books, but there are actually no books in those tools. So just something in, important to remember. We have, I believe, nine reference centers in Mel, and the reference centers not only have articles, but they also have uh, video collections and image collections. So definitely want to explore those. And then we have three early learning interactive databases, and we'll be looking at those today as we go forward. So now let's take a look at the layout of the landing page of Mel. And after this, we're going to head out onto the Mel.org website. So as I mentioned before, there are two parts of Mel. There's the e-resources or those databases that we purchase. And then there's also down here on the left, Melcat. And Melcat is our statewide sharing service of resources. We're one of the few states in the country that actually share all of our resources statewide. And I, I say that quite liberally. I think we have 95% participation rate in our public libraries and probably about the same participation rate in our post-secondary institutions. For example, Michigan State participates in MELCAT. So we have access to all the holdings at Michigan State and can get those sent to our local public library uh, for free. So kind of keep that in mind about MELCAT. If you go into your public library or into your public library's website and you they don't have the book or the item that you're looking for, you can go right into MELCAT. You have to have a current working public library card um, at any public library in the state and, then, and, and they have to participate in MELCAT. Um, and then you go in here and you look for what you want and it will tell you if it's available. And within three weeks, if you choose to have that sent to you, it, within three weeks, it will be sent to your public library. And then you get the item for three weeks after it arrives. So um, that's a really incredible tool. And we're working with states all the time to show them how we were able to do that in the state of Michigan. Many states have regional sharing, but very few have a statewide sharing service like Michigan. So it's pretty special and pretty awesome. And it's always in the millions every year of how many um, items were um, shared throughout the state. So it's, it's pretty awesome. So that's Melcat. The e-resources are all about these other pieces that you see up here. So behind the e-resource link is a list of all of the different databases that Mel has purchased. And then we have the educator portal. And this is a really important space because behind the educator link, you have information on how to take the databases that we have and move them to your own website. And that's what we encourage you to do. We do not want students to have to navigate through the mel.org website unless they absolutely have to. And it's really easy if you go into the educator page and pull up the individual databases. There's step-by-step -step instructions on how to embed a button to your web page or how to just embed a link behind text. So we definitely want to encourage that. We're a repository. We are not an interactive website, just a repository of resources. So you'll find that and many other things behind the educator link. And then this e-journal portal at the top of the page, all of those different subscriptions that I just pointed out in primary search, education source, master file, like People Magazine, all the scholastic publications. If I don't wanna go into the individual databases, um, to do a keyword search or anything like that. Instead, I just want to um, go to People Magazine for this week and read this week's People Magazine. Instead of going through the different e-resources, we've organized up here in the e-journals a giant title list that you can search and find the publication title of your choice and navigate it in that direction. So we'll take a peek at how to do that as well. So our first e-resource that we're going to explore together today is the ebook K-8 collection. And everything that you see on this page is available in that collection. We have a lot of sports books. We have the first 12 books in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. We have a lot of alphabet books, cookbooks, um, Michigan and different state and country books are in there. Lots of crafts, different things that you see. I know we have a subscription, or the Big Nate series is in there, 
Boxcar Children is one of the series that you'll find in the K-8 collection. They're adding books all the time to this collection. So definitely check it out. And Beth, I know you mentioned your, your background with secondary ELA. And I just want to point out that the high school ebook collection just had added this last year hundreds of literary classics. So there should be no school without a literary classic in their building because we have them available for free through Mel now. So a lot of really great things added to these collections on a regular basis. Can so I ask with, you a question about this? Sure, yeah. Are, Beth. This, are the students able to um, download the text to a device or can they just read it on their device or how does that work? Yes, that's actually what I'm about to show you. We're going to go into the ebook collection. My apologies. And no, you're fine. Absolutely. We're going to go in there and I'm going to show you how to do all of those things, how to share these books, how to open them, how to download all of it. So I'm, I'm at the mel.org landing page. I'm going to click on the e-resources. This is how we're going to navigate today. And so there are three different portals here. We have a public library field that has been set up for the databases most often accessed by our public library patrons. In fact, A to Z databases, which is a business database, is the most used database in the state of Michigan. So that's kind of unique um, as far as those databases that we purchased through Mel. This is the most used. Then we also have our e-resources set up behind a K-12 link. And these are, again, those resources most often accessed by the K-12 community. And then we also have an A to Z list under the browse all resources with an explanation of each of the different resources. But at the bottom of the page, if you know the title of the e-resource you're looking for, you can navigate to it in this way. And that is how we're getting to our first resource, the ebook K-8 collection. We're clicking letter E for ebook. And you'll see we have a few ebook collections. This first one, this is a link that searches all five ebook collections from EBSCO. That's our vendor here, EBSCO. And then it also searches the ebook collections in many of the other EBSCO products within Mel. And this is awesome to find a book. But one thing that I want to uh, mention about searching in this way is that if you want to share resources, um, for example, your results list or share a collection, share lists with people, you will not be able to do it from this, that it's like a mini discovery service. So it's searching multiple databases. So the share tools don't work in here. Um, you have to be in individual databases for all of the share tools to work. And that's going to have a little bit more meaning in a second. So we have an academic collection. I encourage you to explore that for your own professional development. I see that they've added hundreds of 2020 titles, several that have to do with the pandemic and data from the pandemic. So some good information in the academic collection. We have an ebook business, ebook high school. This is where all those literary classics are now. And then the ebook K-8 collection, which I'm clicking on. And then below that was the ebook public library collection. There is a little bit of overlap between those different collections, but not very much. So if you're looking for something, I do encourage you to look through all of them to make sure that you have exhausted every possibility before you move out and look beyond. So the landing page of all of the EBSCO host products look pretty much the same. It's slightly boring, um, not entirely engaging. It's the content that we're going to find in it that's more important. Um, this carousel of books at the very top these are recent publications that have been added to the collection. So you can always scroll, scroll through that and see if something new of interest has been added. And then there is a browse by category and it's pretty good, but I do feel like some titles are omitted if you had just done a search on your own rather than going through the, the ones that they curate for you. Um, I kind of like doing my own search. I feel like I get better results. So these are pretty good to give you an idea of what's in there but I think there's even more that can be found um, than just searching through those categories. So let's do a simple search. Um, I'm just going to type in alphabet and see what kind of titles we get. And here I have 121 books that come up with the search term alphabet. And you can see they're pretty uh, standard. 
And then I'll also mention, you will see this AP video feed in just about every EBSCO product. This is kind of like advertising. So I don't even hardly notice it anymore. I just skip right past it. And I would love this video feed. It was if it was age appropriate, first of all, to K8. And then secondly, I would love it if um, I could link to these video clips after the fact. I mean, there's nothing terrible about them. They're just news clips. They're not awful. It's just that I have no way to um, search through them and or grab and save them for later. So I've asked them to take them off of here and I have been denied. So I, I will continue to try and get these removed, but having no luck so far. So you just kind of move past those and then you see all of the different books listed. And I just have my page sorting 10 books at a time. You can have it actually list up to 50 items per page. Um, you just go to your page options. And I see I have a brief description. You can change all of that, including how many results per page. So I just have it set up to the default options here. So this is what you would see if you went in. Um, as I go through these different alphabet titles, I notice that some of them are in PDF and some of them are in EPUB. If you're on your desktop at work, I encourage you to use the PDF. If you're on your small cell phone, I encourage you to use the EPUB version. Not both, not every title has both choices, but the EPUB has like an automatic um, screen adjustment. So it fits to your screen reader and it's good for smaller devices, but it's not so good for the desktop because sometimes it squishes content it like wants to auto adjust and it shouldn't be because you're on a desktop so it really works for smaller devices better but i encourage you to use the pdf if you're on your desktop or if you have two options and desktop is one of them the difference between the two is really really minor um, the pdf has five toggle tools for the book the epub only has three which is pretty um, non-important other books that you see in here like we have the individual letter books and these got a lot of activity at the onset of COVID when we had the young ones learning virtually from home. We had these great letter books that they could utilize. And a way that you can search for just those letter books is I know that the publisher is the Super Sand, or this is part of the Super Sandcastle series. So I'm going to search by Super Sandcastle. So you have to find something common in all of those titles. So I'm going to open the advanced search. And now I'm going to just look for Super Sandcastle. And now when I do my search, only those 26 titles are in my results list. So all of the different letters, and these are a really, this is a great collection of alphabet books, I have to say. Um, and then if I wanna share those with all of you, I can come over here to my share tool and drop down and then grab the permalink. And when I grab that permalink, and I'm going to paste this right into the chat. When I put that permalink in the chat, now all of you should be able to link onto that and you should be at the exact same page that I am where you have 26 alphabet books. Now this is the exact share tool I was talking about that does not work with this ebook full EBSCO collection. You have to be in those individual databases for the share tool to work. Another thing really important about this share tool is that you have to grab the permalink if it's offered anywhere in a database. And that could be an EBSCO product, a Gale product, Britannica, whomever. If they offer you a permalink, that's likely the only way you're going to be able to connect to that page. If you try and come up here to the URL at the top of the page, then you have session data in there just for this moment in time. And so if I try and share that URL with someone, it will be broken on the receiving end because that session's only good for right now. So you have to come down here and grab that share tool if you wanna share all of these resources. And another thing I just realized is that I did not share my uh, slide deck with all of you. So I'm going to copy the slide deck right now and also drop that in the chat so everyone has today's slide deck. Um, there's some definitely some step by step instructions on how to do these things in case you forget when we all part our ways, part ways this afternoon. So definitely something to refer to later.
So that's one example. I'm going to clear my uh, fields here and we're going to do another search. This time we'll just do a simple search of Michigan. Now I was a K-12 media specialist in, in many different ways and my first job was actually K-12 at Mayo Osable Schools in Oscoda County and the first library job was K-12 and my whole background was secondary so I was a little nervous about that first elementary position as you can imagine and one thing that I remember distinctly about the elementary teachers in that particular place um, not that I want to point fingers, but I remember third and fourth grade teachers being a bit of hoarders when it came to state books. And I know there's been a transition from fourth grade being where we learn about Michigan down to third grade. And then in fourth grade, now we learn about the individual states. However, back at that time, as you can imagine, those state collections are pretty pricey. And we typically only have one in our local library. Sometimes it gets updated every five years, so it's current. But there's usually one collection of 52 states um, and or 50 states, sorry, I always deck of cards get that mixed up. Um, so all of the states and then one by one, they would mysteriously disappear from the library and they would mysteriously reappear after those different um, assignments were done, which is problematic when you have three third grade teachers, three fourth grade teachers and all the students that populate them and um, there are no state books left when the actual unit comes up. So what I love about the, the books that we have in this collection is that we have five really good solid publishers of individual state books. So all students and all of your elementaries throughout the state have access to state books all of the time. And they don't have to hoard, no one has to hoard anymore, the different books about the individual states. So this first book is actually my favorite publisher. Um, and again, this is all of the different states. When I click on that title, I go to the detailed record page about the book. You can see all these tools that I can utilize with the book down the right of the page. And we're going to see those same tools in the next page in the PDF. So I'm going to wait and we'll show you those tools in the next portion. But this just gives you a little bit about the book itself and then some highlighted information as well as linked table of contents. So all of that is available in the book. It's kind of giving us a basic overview of the book. But now if I want to go in it, I'm going to click on PDF. I can also click PDF from my results page and go directly to the screen here. So this is um, the Michigan ebook that we have available. And first of all, the toggle tools down here in the bottom right. So this is how it's going to look when you first come in. But if I want to make that book full screen, I just go down to these four arrows in the bottom right corner and I can click on that. And now it makes my page full screen. And if I want it to fit to page so it looks more like a book, I can click this little fit to page icon. And now I actually have a book and I can advance the pages like I would in any book, basically. You don't get that cute turning of the page, but you do actually get to see all of the pages. Um, you can also increase the size of the page and decrease as well. You can scroll with your little scroll tool on your mouse. So we can make those bigger. If I want to leave the book and go back to that original landing page, I can click those four arrows again, or I can hit the escape key on my keyboard. And now I'm back to where I was. And now we're going to take a look at all of the tools that we have available for the book itself. And we're going to start in the top right hand side of the page here where it says sign in and then folder and help. So if you have any questions about ebooks as you're utilizing them, there's always a help menu. All of the databases have a help button to try and help you with what you need. Um, also, you are able to download all of the ebooks and all ebooks are free. You can have multiple users on the book simultaneously. We had a school down in the southeast part of the state that had close to a thousand students on the same book at the same time on a thousand different desktops. So very easy to do. We don't anticipate issues with that. Of course, there's always glitches with computers, but for the most part, this is working as expected. 
Um, you can download and have these accessible offline. However, after 28 days, they would no longer be accessible. So just like if you're using OverDrive or Libby with your public library, you can download all of their digital books and have them available. But then after 28 days, we all know those disappeared in our downloads. Well, I bring that up because you have to actually sign in and build an account in EBSCO in order to download any books. Um, and that's true only of the ebook collections. So to build an account, you just need a working email and anyone in the state of Michigan is invited to do that. Um, and then you're able to download to your account. After 28 days, not, not accessible, but you can download as many times as you want to make that book um, accessible. But of course you have digital access to it 24 seven, 365. You can also drop this book into your Google Drive. Just open up Google Drive here and it will prompt you if you wanna just drop the current page, the current page and the next X amount of pages, or if I want to drop the section, um, you can do that as well. Usually the section is, I'm thinking because I'm not on the landing page, let me go back to the cover and I bet I get a different result here. So Google Drive, there we go. This book is 32 pages long, so the section is usually the entire book, but you want to make sure you're on the cover page when you're looking for that. I can put any book in Google Classroom and build an assignment with that book by just clicking the Google Classroom icon here. So when I click that, now I can come over here and I can select my class and I can choose an action. We're going to create an assignment with the Michigan book and now I can just title it and say, um, read about the Porcupine Mountains. And then this book is already linked to that assignment. So now I can just click assign and it just pushed out into that class. So it's really, really easy to add content to Google Classroom from most every database in Mel. And that includes World Book Kids, Britannica, any of the EBSCO products, our Gale products, um, they all interface with Google Classroom pretty well. If you're not using Classroom and you're just using maybe Schoology or Blackboard or Canvas, a different learning management system, you would go to the permalink here and open the permalink. And now I can come and grab that. I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this into the chat. And this should take everyone directly to this Michigan book if you're clicking on it in the chat right now. But one thing that's really interesting and unique about these permalinks in the ebook collections is that if I send you this link, it's going to take you to the cover page because that's where I grabbed the link. But if I come down here to Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park and I open that page, now if I grab that permalink, it's going to change and it's going to open to that page, page 10, because that's where I grabbed the permalink. So kind of keep that in mind, do a couple of tests with your permalinks, make sure it's opening to the page that you want it to. Um, I learned it the hard way. I spent an entire day grabbing permalinks and didn't even think about it changing page numbers. And this is of course, right when I got hired. So I spent a whole day building, um, oh book lists and all these wonderful things but the thing that i would do in every single book after i opened it is i would skim through and make sure it was age appropriate for what i was trying to create make sure the text made sense make sure the images were good so i'd be browsing through all of them and i'd get to the bottom and be like yep that was good and then i'd grab the permalink and i'd create my list i had to go back through every book and we're talking hundreds and redo them all so don't make the mistake i did um, easy to avoid so that's how I'm going to grab permalinks in the individual books. We have an export tool. This typically used by older learners. So if you want to direct, um, directly export to Noodle Tools or um, Reference Works, EndNote, EasyBib, these are some popular ones. You can export those bibli um, bibliographic data in there. We have a dictionary. Here's your citation. So I can copy and paste these different citations. And again, all the big hitters are in here, APA, Chicago, Harvard, MLA. Um, you'll find all of them in here. 
I can print the pages, I can email the pages. Anytime you're emailing something using this tool, whether it be in a publication or in an ebook, keep in mind that the person on the receiving end should be from Michigan, um, only because if they're not, they might get password protected. Um, protections and locked out of the site if they're not seen as coming from an IP in Michigan. And that became pretty important during COVID because we saw a lot of schools taking school buses, parking them out into more rural areas and putting hotspots on them so students could come um, and snuggle up there to the, to the bus and utilize the internet from that hotspot. But here's the thing about hotspots. It's coming from a cellular network and most of those cellular networks are not originating in Michigan. So those IP addresses are not coming from Michigan. Therefore, you're getting prompted for secondary authentication where you would have to put in a Michigan driver's license number or a public library card number. And it has to be a working public library card number. So it has to be current and up to date. Secondary authentication is a bummer and we don't want anyone to have to secondary authenticate. We offer it as a tool for people who need it in the now, but some of the individual tools and different databases don't work exactly the same when you have to secondary authenticate. So what I will recommend is that if you find that your students are accessing this content outside the school building where you run into a lot of those IP issues, um, contact us at our Mel er help at mcls.org that's on that second slide I shared today because um, we can create a unique URL for your building so that your students don't have to ever secondary authenticate. We want to make sure your kids can get into these resources as easily as possible, no matter where they are coming from. So if you have any issues at all, please don't hesitate to contact us. We want to make it easy for you. So I'll stop my IP soapbox there. Yes. Um, so I have just a quick question. We have yeah. a number of students with IEPs um, who require text to speech or require books to be read to them and so on like that. Do the, some of these resources, uh, do they read the books to the students? We do not have any book readers in here. Our articles are text to speech, but not the individual books. Um, they are in PDF. Okay. So if you have PDF readers, um, very yeah. likely it will work with those. Okay. But yeah, um, you'll find that audio in any stretch is very cost prohibitive. Um, yeah. And I don't know if I have anyone in the room that remembers book flicks. So three years ago, we had a whole different suite of e-resources available in Mel. And one of them was book flicks. Well, that was back when we had $4 million a year in funding for the Mel e-resources, mostly grant funded, but also public tax dollars. Um, so it went from 4 million to just under 3 million three years ago. And BookFlix, which is an audio book library, basically, went, they increased their um, costs. They outpriced us, basically. They wanted 750,000 just for us to have book flicks for everyone in the state. So it was so cost prohibitive. We knew that everybody loved it, but there was just no way that we could afford it because when we purchase databases in Mel, we have to consider all populations, zero to five, K-12, post-secondary, adults, everyone has to have a play in that. And so trying to do the best for everyone, we couldn't do any kind of audiobook because it was just so expensive. So we feel you, we know, we hear you and understand how awesome it would be. I myself, I'm an audiobook listener. I mean, that's just about the only way I listen or read books anymore is audiobooks. So um, we would love to provide that, just cost-wise cannot do it any longer. So any other questions about the eBooks? There is one more tool on this page that I've not shown you and it's the search within feature. And I just wanna show you really quickly. And I think about search within, if I'm doing my own research, like maybe I'm in the academic ebook collection, looking for something on digital literacy or formative assessment maybe. This is a tool that you can use. You can go inside a book. And then let's say I just wanna find Porcupine Mountains. So every single occurrence where Porcupine Mountains is written in the book you get a little context around it and then all of these are linked directly to that page so if i want to go to page nine 
and look at the Porky Pine Mountains on page nine, it actually highlights the text for me um, to the term that I'm looking for within the text. So yellow on yellow is a little tough there, but you get the idea, um, even mountains. So it's grabbing mountains as well. So the search within tool is pretty awesome, especially the older you get and uh, need to be searching three and 400 page books, not 32, but pretty neat tool there. All right, I am going to step out of the ebook collection. It's just one of many, many databases that we have in Mel. And so I'm excited to share a couple more with you. We're going to go back to the landing page of Mel. And I always just click the little um, Mel logo up here to get to the landing page. Going back into the e-resources. And this time we're heading to primary search. That was the database that I shared at the beginning that has all the scholastic publications. So I'm heading over to primary search. And you can see we have a lot of different letter P's. So I'm going to click on primary search, also an EBSCO host product. And I say that just so you know that it navigates pretty much the same. And you can see the same boring landing page. But again, it's just about looking for content. So they want to make it as clean as possible. Um, if I'm in here and I just want to do a search, for example, we're going to look for anything on water. And we see 9,601 results coming back and they include magazine articles book reviews primary source documents and reference books very typical to what's available in primary search with the majority of content being magazine content so now what i can do 9000 is a bit much let's advance search that first and i'm just going to type in flint and we'll look for articles on Flint water. Now we're down to 16 articles, much more manageable. So again, this is going to list by relevance. I can resort it by date newest if I choose. I have my share tool here. So if I wanna send all of you my search results, I can copy that and I'm going to paste it in the chat. And here are those 16 articles for all of you to look at. Another thing that you have in the share tool, and I've kind of just, um, blown past it is the email alert and the RSS feed. If you use RSS feeds, this is a great way to get new articles that are coming to you. Or if there, if you've created a search here, this search can now be an RSS feed. So anything that would come up with water and Flint between now and forever, if you set up an RSS feed, it would search for those search. It would search for that keyword search. Um, it would be saved and you can make it an RSS feed. You can also set up an email alert for any new articles that are posted about water and Flint to this database. So email and RSS are pretty cool. Email becomes even more cool if I just wanna set up an email alert for every time People Magazine is published or every time a Scholastic News um, publication comes out, is released. So email alerts, RSS feeds, another way to link to the different resources in Mel. So what we love is when all of these articles are in both HTML and PDF that gives our students the most accessibility. Um, so this first article, Our Water Was Poison, I can go ahead and click on the PDF, the HTML, or the title. You have any, any way you'd like to start, you can. So I'm gonna click the title. Typically, when you click the title, it takes you to the original format of the publication. And in this case, it's the PDF version. So whenever you open a PDF, you actually get the entire article, or excuse me, the entire publication. And now you can browse the entire publication, September 23rd, 2019, Junior Scholastic. We opened the article, Our Water Was Poisoned, but maybe I wanna go take a look at dogs walking on water here and see what that article's about. So just know that once you've opened a PDF, it gives you the ability to explore the entire publication. We'll go back to our original article here. And now I have all of those same tools that I had in the ebook collection, but they're specific to this one article. So that's all I'm connecting to with these tools is this particular article. So up here at the top, I have all the PDF tools that I need. And we'll take a look at this article. This is the entire article here, it's six pages. And just how it would have been published in the magazine. 
the sixth page is always your um, copyright information. So kind of know that. But what I can do, I can download this. So if I click the download, it just prompts me and asks me where I want to put this article. And once I download an article from any of the subscriptions in Mel, they're mine forever until I choose to delete them. I just took a grad class last year at Wayne State and I found every single article but one that I needed in the Mel databases. So really helpful for doing my own research, um, taking my own classes. So I can't say enough about that. And now sharing these articles is just as easy. So if I want to share this article with all of you, I'm starting at the bottom right with the permalink. So I have to click that little link and then it exposes the permalink to the top. And the same is true here as the eBooks. Um, I can't grab that URL at the top because there's session data. So I need to go where the permalink is offered to me. And I'm going to drop that in the chat. Whoops, I don't know that I copied it. And so you should now be able to link directly to this article from the chat um, just by grabbing the permalink. And then you, here's your export tool for your noodle tools and bibliography content. Here's your citation page. So when I click that, here are my different formats of citation that I can copy paste. I do have a folder here. So if I have created an account, I can save this article to a folder right here inside of EBSCO that will always be accessible as long as I'm logged in when I save it and logged in when I access it. I can email this article very easily. I can just pop in my email address, maybe put a subject or a comment and then click send and it will go quickly to the recipient. The print button, you'll see there are two of them. If I want to print the entire PDF, I want to use that print tool inside the PDF. If I use the, P the print tool outside of the PDF, what I'm printing is actually what I see on the page, everything I see on the page right now. My favorite tool in the articles, without a doubt, is the um, Google Drive tool. If I click that, I get this flash of the screen. It wants me to select my Gmail account. And then it'll say, please wait while you are redirected to Google. And now if I click OK, this article is now in my Google Drive. So if I come up here to Drive and I refresh my screen, here is that article that I just dropped in. Our water was poison. And it actually went to two locations. Um, it went into my EBSCO folder and it went into my main Drive account. And why that happens, Britannica, EBSCO, and Gale, whenever I drop an article from those databases, it automatically builds a folder for me. So now every time I drop an article from any of those databases, they'll be organized alphabetically in a folder for me. I think I have this one in here twice, yes. Our water was poison. It's listed alphabetically um, exactly where I put it. So it's right there in my EBSCO folder for me. So super easy to do that. Again, that was just clicking on the drive tool and clicking OK. That was all I had to do. And then the same is true of the articles as was true of eBooks. If I want to put those into Google Classroom, I can just click on the icon and it prompts me to select my classroom and I can share it with my classroom. So that's the PDF version of this article. The HTML version will be accessible down here on the left. I can click on HTML full text. And now it takes me to all of the additional tools that I need for accessibility. At the top, I have a translation tool, 35 different languages in here that we can translate this text to. Um, I have heard that Spanish, French, and German are pretty much word for word, perfect translation. Arabic, not as perfect. Um, it got a fair rating. I had a couple of native uh, Arabic speakers look at the translation and they were like, eh, it's okay. So just so you know, not all translation tools are equal. Um, it depends on the language that they're translating into. So let's say I choose to translate this to Spanish. So here is that same article in Spanish. Um, now, if I want to grab any of these tools, Drive, um, Permalink, and share this resource, just note you cannot share it in a translated text. If I share it, it will still share. I can still grab a permalink and grab it and share this, but it's going to share in the English version. It's not going to share in a translated text. Just like the reader, 
you'll see that there was a text to speech reader. As soon as you translate the text, it will disappear because you cannot listen to it in a foreign language either. You can only listen to it in English. So if you need this text, then you would literally have to copy it and paste it into a new location. So I'm going to go back to the original language here. And now the other tool is the listen tool. And if if you're just looking at it, it looks like I could just hit the play button and it's going to start playing, which it will. But what's buried behind here is your menu. So you have to click the left side of the listen tool. And then I'm going to pause it here. And that exposes this little menu tray. And this is where you get all of your additional tools. So you have the first one that allows you to select um, your accent and your voice, whether you want female or male. So you can go American, Australian, or British. And then your next tool here allows you to hover and read. So if you just hover. Five years ago, the water in Flint, Michigan, turned toxic. Today, many residents still can't drink from their taps. How could this have happened in the United States? Okay, so that is that tool right here and I'm gonna turn it off. So right now it's on, the read on hover is on and I just turned it off. So the green button indicates on. I can also increase the font. Come back up here. Oh, I think I have to go in here to do it. There it is. So what it does is it takes that section out and have to build it up. And then this is, it pulls out in text mode. So if I just want to really focus in and then there are some different tools. So now if I want to increase font in the text tool, I have to pull it out and then I can increase it here. And then the page mask, this just helps your students focus on a particular location. And download i can download this to an mp3 player so they can have a listening device to listen to this article so all of the these tools are only available if you go in and you grab that little menu and expand it so i just want everyone to know that it's there and then if you just want a portion of this red you can highlight a portion and when you do that now your tools show up so i can have just this section translated or listen to just this highlighted text in the fall of 2015, those officials confirmed people's worst fears. Flint S water was contaminated with lead, a highly toxic metal. And I believe that all of the different um, vendors that we have for secondary tools, when I say that, so all of the databases like this, I think of as a secondary tool, um, high school tool, have this um, reader that they purchase. So it's like the same in every single one of these resources. The only one that's different is the Pebble Go resource, which is the one that we're going to explore next. And that actually has recorded voices from off-Broadway actors and actresses. So there's a lot more dynamic, you know, inflection and intentional slowing down of different things, really purposeful enunciation. But this is something that just about everyone uses. This is a pretty universal reader that is available in here. So all of these tools work exactly the same, whether you're in HTML or PDF. And sometimes um, it will only link to PDFs. If it's just an HTML, you'll get it to link to the HTML. But very often, if I want to drop this in Drive, it it only drops in the original format of the publication. So just know that that can happen. Any questions at all about using the PDF or the HTML and accessing? Pretty traditional search inside of primary search here. OK, I am going to do one more thing. We're going to go back to the landing page of primary search. And this time we're going to look for individual publications. So if I just want to pull up Scholastic News for second grade and see what the most recent publication is, I can come up here to publication. And I will say COVID has slowed down even Scholastic. You know, they definitely follow the school year. And we saw everything up to date right up until June. And then we still haven't seen a new publication for them this year. So not 100% sure why that's happening. I know we have a subscription to it. So it must be on Scholastic's end. So what I did is I went up here to publications. And when I did that, 
a second search field opened up. So in here, I want to put Scholastic and browse to look just for that publication. So all of the different databases have this publication field at the top, and you can search for what publications feed that particular database and learn a little bit more. So I have all these different Scholastic publications that come up, and I can see that they're in PDF and HTML, which is awesome. And I'm just looking for the second grade. So I'm going to open Scholastic News Edition 2. And I, here's my share tool. So if I want to share this entire run of Scholastic News for second grade with all of you, I can come in here and grab that permalink. Or if I just want the most recent article, here's our May, June 2021 publication. And I can open that. And there were four articles in that Scholastic publication. I can share, again, just the May-June publication with everyone by grabbing that permalink. So the share tool can be really helpful that way. And now I have the entire run of articles in the May 1st, May-June um, Scholastic News. So just how they would have appeared there. Let me do one more. So we'll go to this landing page. Here are publications. And now let's say I just want to find zoo books. And I can browse and there's zoo books. Now I click the title. Here's the entire run of zoo books. But if I want the most recent, I can expand. And here's the November 2021 of zoo books. And there was one main article in there on kangaroos. You know, I bet the October might have more. It might be that's all they've released in the November publication. Publishers are kind of funny. They like things to be available for sale on the shelf for a few days before it goes live on digital networks. Can't blame them there. So here is um, three articles that were in the October publication. And now we get to see those lovely pictures. I love Zoo Books. Zoo Books is so engaging for students. It was one of the most popular. I worked in a public library just for a, a second. I have to say this was probably the most read by elementary age students of all the publications we had in the public library at that time. So it was pretty awesome. And that's why there are so few articles because they are so long. Each of them is quite long. So this is a 19 page article. That's why it took so long to load. So that's an example of what you can see. Um, we just looked at primary search. We can do that exact same search in master file complete in education source hobbies and crafts reference center. We can do that in any way. And remember, we can come up here to eJournals on the landing page. And if I just want to find zoo books and see which database has a subscription, I can just type it in and I see that there are two databases, master file complete and primary search. And I can get to the same information this way. And I go right to that entire run of zoo books from the e-journal portal on the landing page. So a couple different ways to pull up recent publications. Um, I can do the same thing for People Magazine. Anything that I'm looking for in here. Calliope, that was a great one. We don't get that one anymore. Um, so People is in Master File Complete, for example. If I want the most recent People Magazine, I can come over here and go, okay, I want the November 8th People Magazine. And we'll open up a little kindness can change someone's life, but now I have access to the entire run or the entire People magazine for November 8th. And again, this is just like you would see it on the stand. Um, there you go, People magazine. So go to this e-journal link at the top of the Mel website and start looking to see what of your professional journals, favorite magazines, popular magazines. Uh, I remind people Rolling Stone is in there for free. The Atlantic Monthly is in there for free. Um, just about anything you can think of. Ed Leadership, nearly every administrator in the state of Michigan has a subscription to educational leadership. It's free in nine databases in here and it's up to date all the time. Phi Delta Kappen, the same. So just think about what professionally you would like to see and take a peek in there. And I bet that most everything is available for free. So just something to keep in mind. We're going to head to our next e-resource now and think kindergarten through second grade with the next one. We've been upper L um, recently in that primary search. I think of that as kind of third grade and above. 
but now we're going to go right down to the kindergarten through second grade group and we're going to access pebble go and pebble go is awesome in a variety of ways um, capstone is an incredible vendor to work with they're they're just fantastic they're constantly making updates changes additions trying to make it as user friendly as possible and at the library of michigan we were only able to purchase two modules and we chose social studies and animals if we had it to do over again i think i would have chosen social studies and science only because i know now that the social studies module aligns almost verbatim to the kindergarten through second grade curriculum in the state for social studies so it's pretty phenomenal in that way however capstone has given credit to every school district in the state of michigan for the first two purchases so it used to be um, you would make the first purchase for like $795 per building per year for a module. And then the next module you added would be like 595. And then the third one you added would be 295. So what they've done is given credit for those first two purchases. So now if you want to add any modules, uh, John quoted me two weeks ago at MAME, it's right now $295 per building per year. And they have a science module. Um, a biography module they have everything in spanish and we will coordinate with you at mel so that everything is on one page if you choose to add additional modules so let me show you why i'm talking so much about it because i think they're pretty awesome you have your permalinks here at the top of the page so if i want to link to this i just click on it and it automatically copies to my clipboard and now i can paste it somewhere so that's at the top of the pages um all if I hover over being a good citizen, all about money, being a you good can see how that might become annoying in a classroom if students don't have headphones to their um, available to them. So you can turn off the hover sounds by expanding this capstone logo at the top right and just clicking turn off hover sounds. So this is these are the different categories that you have this first one all about money aligns with the economics portion of the K2 curriculum. And when you open any section i'm just going to open supply and demand you get five small chunks of information about supply and demand. This is now readable and you can listen while you read. Buying and selling things is based on supply and demand. Supply is the amount of goods and services there are to buy. Demand is how many people want to buy those goods and services. So small digestible chunks, uh, simple citation. So I always have the ability to see where this information is coming from. And then if I want to uh, print this and make it available offline, I have the ability to put it into a PDF and share it or print it. And then there are very basic comprehension activities with each of these different um, pages. So you see, again, real simple comprehension activities, these black line masters here are available at the bottom of all of the different places. Also up here at the top, you get these breadcrumbs. So students can go backwards pretty easily just by clicking those breadcrumbs across the top of the page. Some of the things that have recently been added holidays and this again holidays are in that K2 social studies curriculum. So learning about different holidays and I love that they've added several new holidays to the list. Um, Diwali actually started today, um, November 2nd through 6th, but the actual day of Diwali is November 4th. So something to kind of keep in mind. Some of these are brand new holidays to me that I'm just learning about. And this is actually where I'm learning about many of these is through Pebble Go as I go in here to see what new items that they've added recently. So a lot of different holidays that can be explored. Literally, when I started working at Mel, there were three rows of holidays. And now I think there are seven or eight rows of holidays. So that's just a testament to how hard they're working to beef up this particular resource. Um, branches of the military always, always um, interested. 
of interest to students. I've been a K-12 media specialist, or I was for over 16 years in different capacities and different kinds of buildings. And it does not matter what grade level students are at, they love learning about branches of the military. And this is a nice resource for young ones to learn about the different branches. So a lot of information there. I'm gonna to go to the home page and we'll take a gander over here at the animal different things. We look at animal habitats. This is a second grade curriculum item. I can open and look at these different habitats and I can go in to look at woodland animals and learn a little bit about some woodland animals. I can go back and look at ocean animals. And notice some of these have videos at the bottom, some have maps at the bottom, some just have audio. So it kind of depends where you are and what's available. It's not the same for everything. We go back a page. We'll go into insects and spiders. I think this is some of the toughest vocabulary for early learners. Um, we'll go into insects. See all these different insects in here that you can learn about. We'll go into the cicadas. And I pulled up cicadas just because I know they have a range finder and a listen and a video tool in here. So if I go to range, that's going to tell me where you would find cicadas. They're in purple. And then I can listen to what a cicada sounds like. And I also can watch a little video clip of a cicada. So that is featured in many, again, but not all. They have different things, video, maps, listen tools, all kinds of things, depending on where you are. So if I came over here to spiders and we went into the black widow, this would give me a range on where we would find black widows and a video, but no audio, which makes sense. Um, habitat, the black widow and the food that they eat. We had a huge black widow nest uh, behind our house up in Mancelona one time, a scary, scary thing. It was huge. Let me go back here to my landing page and notice that I can link to any page in here with my copy link tool, including just the animal section. Um, and this is something recent that they've added so I can link just to the animals. You can see a long range of animals here. So if I just wanna learn about pets and farm animals, I can go in and learn about farm animals. So lots of great things in PebbleGo. Any questions on that before we leave that resource? All right, the next resource we're going to explore is Britannica. This is one of our encyclopedias. So I'm going to letter B. And then you'll see that you can go into Britannica Fundamentals, which is our kindergarten through second grade. It is very, very brief. Um, this is like a portion of the bigger Britannica. So I'm not going to open the fundamentals. There is just um, letters, numbers one to 10, your basic shapes, basic animals and colors. And that's just about all that you'll find in the fundamentals. So I just want you to know that's there. But then you have Britannica School. And you can either go to the K-12 landing page, the elementary landing page, high school or middle school. And so when I talked about this educator link at the beginning, having customization, you have the ability to grab whichever landing page you want for students to access. Like I was in Mayo, which was a K-12 building. So I would want them to access this as their landing page. I think most elementaries would want this as the landing page. But what's important to know is you have the ability to, to choose your um, reading level, whether you want elementary, middle, or high school. So if you're in an article, it always it's going to start in elementary because that's our landing page, but you can move up to the middle school reading level, or if you start in middle school, you can move up to high school or you can move down. So something to keep in mind, there's some visual navigation on the landing page. Here's that fundamental part that's a part of the larger Britannica. You can search the animal kingdom from the landing page, different geographic elements from the landing page. So those are all on the landing page of the elementary. Or you can also come up here and do a simple search. So if I'm searching for Michigan, this will default, here's that reading level. So it starts in first grade, but I can up it to middle school or high school here. And it's going to default to the articles. So you have the option of having images and video clips and 
very various other things in here, but it will default to articles. So if I click on the Michigan article, now I have, here's my article, have the ability to up it to a middle school reading level right away, and that's going to change everything, the images, everything. And then when I go to middle school, now I have the ability to go to high school. So you do have movement in there for reading level. So I'm at reading level one, back to the elementary section. And this in here, the text, this is a double click dictionary. So I can double click on any word. So I'll double click coastline here. And what it does, it gives me um, syllable breaks, part of speech, pronunciation, coastline. and an audio of that particular word. So that's the advantage of Britannica having this double click dictionary, which is really fabulous. And then if you see any images on the page anywhere, you can click on those and those are now linkable. So if I want to share those, I can now come up and, um, sorry, yes, share them. So I can copy a link to this image right here. Let me go back a page. If I just want to link to the map, you open the map, go to the bottom, and here's your sharing options. And then I can link here under the arrow. So the unique thing about Britannica is that you'll notice, I'm going to go back to my landing page in elementary. I'm going to explore articles. This time I'm going into plants and other living things. So here are all my plants. And so there's just kind of, it keep taking you deeper and deeper as you search. So if I just want fruit trees, now I can search through all the different fruits that are available. I'll just click on apricot. And now I still have everything that I had before, my double click dictionary. But what I don't see from this landing page is a hyperlink, uh, excuse me, a permalink. There is no permalink in Britannica. So in this resource, only you would come up to the URL and copy that to share it with students if you want to share individual pages with them. Britannica is probably the trickiest when it comes to at home access um, just because of how the different computer systems have to work together. So this one, if you love it, which many of us do, um, you might want to contact Mel ER help at Mel at uh, mcls.org if you're having any issues at all for, with students working remotely on this particular resource and we can get you a direct link into it so just make sure that you know how students are able to access at home and then if you keep going down here in the individual articles is this teacher portal if i click on that now i can look at the lexile level of that article so there is some um, content in here if you want to connect to standards you can it is only connecting to common core um, in this particular database so i'm going to go back to the article on apricot and notice that i have images so i can click on an image and that's going to take me to that shared image view where i can come down here to my sharing options and from the sharing options this is where i would have to make my link ah it's not that one's not giving me a share link not sure why you also see that you have the ability to drop this article into google classroom and drive and even microsoft teams britannica has 80 different translatable languages so if i click on the little globe now i can see over 80 different languages in here and i have a citation tool so we have four different formats of citation through Britannica. I can print my articles in Britannica. So many different things in here. This is a really wonderful user-friendly resource. Questions about Britannica? All right, so I'm going to move on to our next resource. And this time we're going to grab our, one of our other encyclopedias, World Book Kids. And you can see we have two actually, World Book Early Learning, World Book Kids. I'm going to show you kids first, and then we're going to take a look at early learning. World Book Kids is kindergarten through fifth grade. I would think mostly third through fifth could be able to work on this one independently. Younger than third grade might need a little additional help. Um, 
tons and tons of games in here, a lot of different puzzles, educational puzzles, really fun. One of my favorite tools is the maps and more. As we're learning about different states and countries and continents throughout the world, there's the outline maps and flags. And I'm going to date myself a little bit, but I can remember at the very beginning of my teaching career, um, and I was a geography major, I started out that way, um, finding outline maps very expensive uh, we used to get those reproducibles that we'd have to buy the big master books and they were expensive super expensive so now you can print any of these for free so if i want to learn about the united states because i'm in fourth grade i can come in here and i can click on a blank flag would be an option if i want to go back to just the outline map of the us i can print this I can share the PDF of it. I can go right down to Michigan and look just at the individual state and flag. Or I can look a little bit bigger and I can go out into the world or maybe into Canada and I can do the same thing here. So if I just want the outline map of Canada to print and to have students learn with, really easy to grab that there. Let me go back to the main landing page. I love the images that World Book Kids have. Every time that you um, go back to the landing page, the image changes, so it's kind of fun. So much in here. World of Animals. And I know we have Pebble Go and all those animals, but this is awesome for animals too. This tool in the center, Compare All Animals. If I want to come over here and compare, say, an alligator to a crocodile, of course. I put them side by side and then at the bottom right there's a compare now and it will line up these two animals side by side and we see here just by the red bands that this crocodile is bigger meaner lives longer he's all of the things um, keep going down fun facts about both of them all of the different things here and then I can actually go into the exhibit. So if I go into the crocodile exhibit, now I have images um, and I have audio. So I can hear what a crocodile sounds like and then I can go over here to the alligator exhibit, scroll down and there's some video clips in this one. And I also have the ability to listen to an alligator and you can see they sound very different. So that's inside the exhibits when you pull up the different animals. And of course, if you are in World Book Kids, just like any other resource, you can use the simple search tool and I could have searched for alligator that way and come across all of the same content. It's just how it is formatted differently by how you access it. So I do encourage you to explore this particular um, resource, tons of science projects in here. So if you want science you can use, here is some different science projects, um, effects of temperature on microwave popcorn, all sorts of different things. <laughs> nice, Andrew, the shark growled in Jaws. I don't remember that, that's pretty cool. Um, so here you go, how long before bread goes bad, all different kinds of science experiments here. So World Book Kids, lots of different things. Love this resource, it's so wonderful, very engaging, very visual. Um, but I'm gonna roll back to World Book Early Learning. Now this is an interactive site for our earliest learners, kindergarten through second grade or third grade. And you get to this kind of crazy opening. There's a four grownups tab up here on the right. So if I click on that, I'm going to find out things like curriculum correlations, any kind of guiding reading, um, lesson plans that go with different books inside of here. So that's the grown up page. So I just wanted to point out the grown up link at the top right. And then I have the ability to search through videos, games, stories or activities. So we'll start with videos. And when I open videos, now the way that I'm searching next are these little round icon image things here at the top. So here's my body, video clips about my body, video clips about people at work, video clips about the rainforest, dinosaurs, 
trucks, people on the move. These are all video clips and all of these video clips can be shared. Um, they're small. So I'm going to go down here to the number one counting numbers and we're going to learn about time for a second. How do you know when it is lunchtime or playtime or bedtime? Clocks. Clocks come in all shapes and sizes, but no matter what they look like, all clocks help us to tell time. Okay, so you kind of get a feel for these types of video clips. Now, no link. We don't see any permalink anywhere. And when we see no permalink, then we have to come up here to the top. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in the chat. Hopefully this will link to the clock video clip. And we're again in world book early learning here. So that's how I can link to the video clips. And then we have all these games in here. We have matching, tracing games, concentration. My five-year-old granddaughter could spend hours in here. She loves these concentration games. And they come in uh, three different le levels, small, big, and giant. So a lot of fun games in there. Stories, these actually are stories that are read aloud and they're in different topics. Most of them are Trex Travels. This is a world book publication. So you'll see all of these different books in here that are readable uh, aloud. And then there are a host of activities at the end. And the paint by numbers, um, you can actually, you know, it's kind of fun. So we can hit our three here and start painting by number. So really easy, really easy. So that's actually where I'm going to end. There's a little bit more information in the slide deck from today than what I've shared with you. Um, if you have any questions at all after today, please do not hesitate to ask. You can reach out to me. Um, a couple of other things that I just want to point out on the educator page. Uh, customization. Here, let me just make this bigger. And help and training. We have EduPaz courses. You can get free sketch hours and they're by subject area. So there's a K-12 math, a 612 science, a K-5 science. So these EduPaz courses coordinate with different curriculum. And there are currently 10 that have been published with two more coming. And even a world language and ELL course on different tools that you can use to support that particular thing. Our Mel Minutes, those are our monthly blog posts about all the different things about Mel. And here are the EduPaz link our Mel Minute, and definitely follow us on Twitter and Facebook, social media, because we're daily updating different things that you can use in Mel to be very helpful. And lastly, and I'm going to drop this in the chat before you leave, if you could just spend two seconds to go in and fill out that evaluation. I know we are a strong number of two or three today. So, um, it is anonymous and it's just four multiple choice questions and it is about uh, library services basically to our communities and to the state of Michigan. It's part of our federal grant and our reporting data that we have to send in to the feds every single year. So we appreciate the time that you take to do that. Um, 